the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. Play the dime machine. Sure, and I will, I will. Stop combing your hair all the time. It's my one claim to male beauty. Heaven only knows what you'll do if you lose it. Well, you'll stop combing, that's for sure. See you guys later. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Andy Griffith. Listen to this. Do you see any difference? Uh, look, Ada. You know, I'm getting thin on top, aren't I? I'm looking, I'm looking. I don't see any difference. I'm the MC at all the Lions Club luncheons because of my luxuriant hair. Vern, I promise to love, honor, and obey whether you had a mop or you were bald. And will you please stop combing it all the time? Mm. It's polishing the bowling balls that's doing it. I mean... I can handle being assistant manager of the happy hour bowling alleys, but polishing those balls all the time is making me lose my hair. Look, Byrne, we're starting on our vacation, and Ash and Mildred are picking us up any minute now. You know, I think it's the solvent, or the lacquer I use before I put the balls in the machine. Uh, there they are now. Help me with the suitcases. Don't my hair look all right? Yes! Come on, Byrne! We're coming! Put away your comb and grab a suitcase, Burn. And that's just the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater. A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of... The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Baldy, by Ted Sherdeman. Our stars, Shepard Menken, Lillian Bayef, Vic Perrin, and Mary Jane Croft. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Driving the car is Ash Grove. Seated beside him is his wife, Mildred. In the rear seat are Ada and Vern Hallway, a handsome force. They've planned this vacation for some months. The men are looking forward to making killing at the gaming tables while their wives play the slot machines in the various halls of fortune that line one of Nevada's gambling cities. Vern Hallwell wishes he'd brought his own car instead of being a passenger in Ash Groves. Not that Ash isn't a good driver, but he's out for a vacation and shows it. Slow down, Ash. Where's this uh, hotel you got us rooms at? It's a motel, a motel. Well, where is it? If you drive a little slower, maybe I could spot it. What kind of joint is it, Burn? We don't have to cook, do we? Oh, no. Burn said it was a nice place that doesn't allow any cooking, Mildred. Oh, that's good, Ada, because I am not going to cook on our vacation. You don't have to, baby. Hey, 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 hey. There's the motel. Slow down, Ash. Where, where? Oh, I see it. The Plot of Gold Motel. See it, Mildred? Oh, yeah. Ash missed that last red light. What do you want him to do? Go back and hit it? Hang on to your hats and turn it in. Well, we made it. No thanks to you. Uh, you girls want to wait for us to sign in? Look how many... Oh, I can't wait to play those slot machines. <laughs> Neither can I, Ada. <sighs> I'll get the door. Ladies first. Uh I said ladies first, Ash. I'm sorry. Oh, I see a slot machine from here. There's another one, Mildred. Give me some money, Ash. Sure. Here's five. You have to get change over there. I need some money, too, Burn. Hmm. What happened to the two bucks I gave you when we left? It went for hamburgers on the road. You took it back, remember? Give her five, Burn. We're on vacation. Good luck, Millie. Mm. Here. Thanks, a bunch. We'll check in while you two play. Ash. Look. They're dollar machines. So? Everything's gone up. Oh, what a crummy lobby. Well, we don't sleep in the lobby, Ash. I did the best I could with our reservations. Everything else was filled up. Thunder, lemon, a plum, a cherry, and a lemon. Cherry, lemon, a plum. Here goes another one. A cherry, a whatchamacallit, and a lemon. Be a winner this time. A cherry, a 
plum and a lemon. Well, there goes five bucks. Uh, maybe I'll hit for both of us. Cherry? Lemon. Oh. And another lemonade. <sighs> this time it'll be better. A plum, Mildred. And a lemon. And a cherry. Oh. Well, we got our rooms. How you girls doing? Nothing. Well, Ash, I've used up the fiber you gave me. I've got a dollar left. Well, change machines. Try this one here. Oh, changing machines is bad luck, Burn. When one doesn't pay off, you go to one that does. Put your dollar on this one, Ada. You really... All right. You say so. A plum. A lemon. And a cherry. They don't call them one-armed bandits for nothing. So we've dropped ten. We'll get it back. Let's go to our rooms, unpack, and then hit the big casino across the road. I want to roll it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to see what that couple does. They're playing the machine you just left. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. no. They hit the jackpot. With just one dollar. And you talked me into quitting that one to play this... I There's nothing. told you, Burn. it's bad luck to change machines. This is our room? No. Well, yes. The linen closet at home is bigger than this is. Well, everything else was all filled up. With what? People, that's what. I was lucky to get any reservations at all. Mm, lucky, he says. Where are you going, Ada? Into the hall to unpack our suitcases. There's no room in here. Oh. And stop combing your hair. Does it does it look all right? It looks fine. It looks fine. Here. Take this if you can find a place to hang it. Oh, hi, Mildred. Your room is no bigger than ours. Well, we only sleep here anyway. In a single bed. Here, Burn. Take this and uh, and this. Ash is fit to be tied. He said there's not room to swing a day old kitten, and he's right. Well, next time I'll let him make the reservations. Maybe we'll sleep in the car. We're going to have to stand on that single bed to change our clothes. You've got a good idea, Ada, unloading the suitcases in the hall. Uh, burn here. Uh, no, I, I've used up all the room in the closet. Then put it under the bed. And stop combing your hair. Uh, does it look all right to you, Mildred? Fine. Oh, here comes Ash. Hi, honey. Hi. If I walk funny, it's because I tried to change my socks in what this joint calls a bathroom. Bern, are you sure you didn't reserve rooms for midgets? Now, what are you beefing about? All we do is change clothes and sleep here. At least that'll be a change. <laughs> hey, Bern, there's a big casino across the street. You ready to throw some dice? <laughs> ready as ever. Uh, does my hair look all right? Your hair looks fine. Come on, girls. Do they have slot machines? And a show with stars? They've got everything. Come on. <laughs> More like it, huh, Burn? <laughs> yes, sir, Bob. Where are the slot machines? Over there, huh? For money, Burn. Yeah, yeah. Here's another five. Here's ten, Mildred. Here's another five, Ada. Eight. I see they have half dollar ones there and quarter ones. Hey, there's one for a dime. Play the dime machine. Burn, Ada. I will, I will. Stop combing your hair all the time. It's my one claim to male beauty. Heaven only knows what you'll do if you lose it. Well, you'll stop combing, that's for sure. See you guys later. I'm trying my luck with the band. Wait for me, Mildred. Well, you want to try your hand at roulette, Burn? No, 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 no. I, I want the crap tables. Oh, oh, I, oh, I used to love dice when I was in college. Made 11 passes once, Ash. They're over here. Look, uh, uh, give me a pair of dice, and I can make them talk. you got to get some chips first. How many do you want, Bern? I'll say 10. Here's a $10 bill for them. 10 chips for my friend here, and 20 for me. Hmm. I'll start with 10. <laughs> now for the crap tables. Right. Oh, there's room for us over there. Hmm. Boy, I never saw such a fancy layout before. You bet on every throw of the dice. Well, I'll wait till it's my turn. I, I, I do get a turn, don't I? Sure, as soon as that guy fails to make his point, the croupier passes the dice to the next player. Hmm. I'll just put these ten chips down in front of me here. Oh, I'll bet that guy doesn't make his point. Hmm? Seven up. What'd I tell you? Now, what's this for? What's what for? The, the man with the stick just shoved a pile of chips at me. Look, look, look there. Right next to the ten I put down. Hey, what are you doing? Through snake eyes, mister. But you took away all the chips. My ten, too. You had your chips on natural, did you not? Well, I just had them in front of me. And you threw snake eyes. But I... 
I, I was just waiting to get the dice, like like we did in college. Get a book, mister. A what? A book called How to Gamble. They're free at the cashiers. All right, place your bets. Throw the dice. What happened, Ash? Like the man said, get a book. All right! good at the crap tables. He set his chips and fob on the table and was amazed when the croupier doubled his bet, then took all away on the next throw of the ducks. The croupier's advice to burn was echoed by his vacation pal, Ashgrove. Get a book, they both said. In the meantime, Byrne's wife, Ada, and Ash's wife, Mildred, were having a ball at the slot machines. These are better machines than those at the motel. Oh, you said it. Listen, tuck away what you started uh-huh. with, and whatever you got left is how much you want. How much did you make? Twenty-two dollars. Oh, that's good, Mildred. Let's see, I've got. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I've got over fifty dollars. Well, keep it so Byrne doesn't find out how much you want. Oh, I will. I will. Oh, Millie, I've never seen so much money. Listen, tell him you lost the ten bucks you started with. Oh no, he'll kill me. Well. Mm, then tell him you got a few dollars left, three or four. Nobody expects to win in these joints. Burn does, and he expects me to. Uh-oh, time for the show. Are we ready? Yeah, come on. We'll gather up the husband and go see the show. Oh, I can't wait to see old Blue Eyes. Who? Well, that's what they call him. Frank Sinatra. Oh. I've had a crush on him since the 50s. Ash wants to see Carlton Gross. He's a comic. Oh, there they are, at a crap table. <laughs> He had a wonderful head of hair. <laughs> Stop combing yours. Well, he did. I'd like to know what he rubs on his scalp to get that look. I'd be emceeing luncheons all over the state if I had hair like that. You know that? I'll get the check tonight since I'm the big winner. How much did you win a dice, Ash? Over 300. Three hundred. Three My goodness. Uh, how much did you win, Byrne? Nothing. How much did you? Ada uh, didn't win either. You lost the whole ten I gave you? Well, no, I... about three dollars left, haven't you, Ada? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Boy, I never saw such a crap table. I thought it'd be like I was... Well, like it was in college. You know, you'd wait for the dice, and then you'd make your bet and wait for somebody to cover it. Anyway, I got a book on gambling now. It explains how the crap tables work. And what'd that cost? Nothing. They gave it away free. The price was right. Hey, hey, isn't that the comic Carlton Gross? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy, you, you could spot that head of hair any place. Well, coming this way. Why don't you ask him what he uses? Oh, I'd love to meet him. I'd rather meet old Blue Eyes. Hey, Mr. Gross. Well, how are you, folks? How are you? How are you? How are you? I'm Ash Grove. How are you, sir? Uh, this is my wife, Mildred. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and that's Byrne Hallowell and his wife, Ada. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Very nice. How do you do? Well, uh, ask him, Byrne. <laughs> ask me what? Ask me what? 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 Well, I, I couldn't help noticing, yeah, spit sir. spit it out, sir. Spit it out. <laughs> you have a wonderful head of hair. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you use on it? I, 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 I mean, to give it that that look, you know. Oh, well, the company sends me a free samples of a salve I rub into my scalp every night. Oh? <laughs> or maybe, it, maybe they do it because I'm in a commercial for their product. <laughs> Gee, uh, what is it? Oh, what it's called hair shine. Hair shine. Oh, oh I, I've, I've got to get, get some right away. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Good. It's miraculous. <laughs> well, how did you folks like the show? Oh, oh, I loved it. Was great, it. Really. <laughs> I loved yeah. old Blue Eyes. Oh, yes, he was a good voice tonight. He was in good voice, uh, but uh, uh, how'd you like my act? Oh, we just loved it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> especially the joke. <laughs> the joke yeah. you told about the time Honey. you were for a while, you were playing that club. <laughs> and the people came in all dressed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you ruined it. You ruined it. No, I you mean not. You mean when the two couples came in and the men were dressed in tuxedos, right? <laughs> <laughs> then I said, there's a rich table. They brought their own waiters. <laughs> 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 
If you folks will excuse me. Where where do I get this hair shine? At any drugstore? Oh, sure, sure. Hey, look, this is my last night here, see? Oh, you're the whole show. Oh, well, thanks, thanks for your check. I got a date in San Francisco. Open there tomorrow night. Now, what I was saying about this uh, hair shine, they send me cartons of it, you know. Well, yeah, I, I know for free, you said. Yeah, if you'd like. I got a whole carton still unopened. You can have it if you want for free. Oh, oh yeah, hey, that, that, that'd be great. The price is right. Well, now, if you just give me your address, oh. I'll send it over to you. Oh, it comes in plain tubes, you know. I mean, there's no label on them. Oh, that, that, that's all right. Uh, my, my, oh, my name is Byrne Hollowell. Uh -huh. Pot of Gold Motel. Uh, what's our room number, Ada? Eleven. I thought it was twelve. I thought it was ten. I see, Byrne Hollowell, Pot of Gold Motel. I sent it tonight. Oh, gee, gee thanks, <laughs> Mr. Sure. Mr. Gross. I, I, I really that's appreciate all right. it. All right. Oh, wow. Sworn it was eleven. <laughs> Look here, lovely lo lady. The, the room number's not important. <laughs> well, it's nice seeing you, folks. Good night. Good night. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. A nice oh. man, a real nice man. Fern, yeah. yeah. will you please stop combing your hair? Burn Hollowell could hardly sleep. Not because of the room's smallness or Ada's constant tossing in bed, but because of comic Carlton Gross's offering to send over a supply of hair shine. <sighs> When's he going to send the carton? Blue eyes. Yeah. My eyes are brown. What? Oh, you. You nearly knocked me out of bed again. A single bed, what was supposed to be a double room. If I had hair like his, I could learn to tell a few jokes and be a big star, too. I, I could emcee dinners, not just lunches, I'll tell you. Byrne got up early and checked the desk clerk in the lobby, but no package had arrived for him. He and Ada had breakfast with Mildred and Ashgrove. Then he checked the desk clerk again. Still no package. You want to try your hand at blackjack, Bert? No, no, no. Not, not right away. I want to read the book first. You, you know, how to gamble. Well, I'm going down the street and try my luck. Want to try some new slot machines, Ada? No, I think I'm going to go out to the pool and take a dip, Nellie. Oh, well, I'm going along with Ash. We'll pick you up for lunch. A good idea. Yeah. While I study how to gamble, uh, Ada can have her swim. Oh, we'll see you. Come on, Nellie. Hmm... What can I wear? The bikini or, or the one-piece suit? You suppose he forgot to send the carton? Hmm. Maybe the bikini. Hmm. He's probably like all these stars. They make a lot of promises and carries through on none of them. Look, Byrne, if you're so anxious for some of that stuff, whatever its name is... Hair shine. Yeah, well, then why don't you just go to a drugstore and buy some? Mr. Gross probably forgot all about sending Just it. Just because it's free. Well, he even wrote down my name and, and the name of his motel. Then he'll send it. You know how the mails are. Open the door. Now, where did I put that one-piece suit? There's nobody here on the patio. Well, there's the pool. There's no water in it. I'll read my book. Oh, I guess we'll have to take sun baths. No, not me. I sunburn too easily. Then arrange the parasol so no sun hits you. Why wouldn't they have water in the pool? Mm -hmm. Maybe they're cleaning it out or something. Stop combing your hair. I want to study this book. The middle of the tourist season and no water in the swimming pool. Fine thing. Uh, don't talk, will you? Don't talk. Don't swim. Don't, don't, don't. Do I look all right? No, you look fine. You didn't even look. I know how you look. Well, this one-piece suit is a little tight. Maybe I should have worn my bikini. Mm. I feel silly all dressed up in my swimsuit and no place to dive. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so tight. I'll bet old blue eyes would go for me in this suit. Mm. Mm. Where are you going? I'm going to check that desk clerk again. Maybe the hair salve has arrived. Oh, oh the, he knows you're expecting it. The clerk would bring it out to you if it had arrived. No, not him. There's no room service here. Hi, Ada. Hey. That suit is something else. Hi, Milla. You like it? Oh, I like it fine. Well, it's a little tight. In just the right places. Burn like it. He didn't say. Didn't say? Did he act? Hmm. 
He just read his book on how to gamble, and then he went off to see if that hair salve had arrived yet. No water in the pool? No water in the pool. Hmm. Where'd Bryn go? To see the desk clerk. Well, he wasn't in the lobby or in your room when we came in. Hmm. Hey, how are the slot machines at the new place? Well, Ash gave me another ten, which I lost immediately. You won nothing? Oh, I hit one jackpot. But you know the trouble? It just takes so long to put the money back in the machine. <laughs> how did Ash do? He lost all he made yesterday and then some. You know, our vacation may run short if he doesn't win before the money gives out. Well, Millie, you know, there's one good thing about being poor. What? It's inexpensive. <laughs> go over this again. Oh, please do. Yeah, Mr. Gross, the, the comic you had on your bill, you know, he left early this morning. He checked well, out. Yeah, I, I know, but he promised to send me a carton of air salve. He even wrote down my name and address, Burn Hollowell, at the Pot of Gold Motel, and he promised to send it to me. So? Well, it hasn't arrived yet, and I thought he might have forgotten to send it. That's possible. Well, or that it might still be here, you know, wrapped up with my name on it. What do you expect me to do about it? Well, check and see if it's here. Oh. Well, um, all right, I'll do that. My name is Hollowell, Burn Hollowell. I remember. You care to gamble a little while I look? No, I'll, I'll wait here. All right, I, I'll look for it. No, there's no carton here for you, Mr. Wellahall. Hollowell. Oh, whatever. No, there, there's nothing here for you. Well, Oh, well. Maybe he mailed it. I'll check at the motel again. Hey, Bern. Oh, hello, Mildred. How you doing? Uh, win a little, lose a little. Ash wanted to try his luck at the crap tables again. He here with you? Yeah. Over there someplace. Where's Ada? She's sunning herself in the patio, I guess. Oh, yeah. I saw her there. There's no water in the swimming pool. Yeah, I saw it. How come you came over here alone? I was just checking on the package Mr. Gross was supposed to send me. It's not here. Oh. Well, back to the slot machines. Bye, Burn. Good luck, Mildred. I'll see how Ash is doing. He figured he won on the original table, so he's at it again. Thanks. Oh, hi, Burn. Hi, Ash. How you doing? Good, good, good. I'm, oh, let's see. About uh, 400 ahead. 50 on don't come. <laughs> you see? Now I'm better than 500 ahead. Yeah, I read the book. I, I think I'll try my luck. I don't understand it. Understand what? Well, I, I read the book, studied it. Look, it tells you how to gamble, not how to win. How'd you do, Ash? Oh, we'll have to cut our vacation short, Millie. I lost. Again. So did Burn. So I wasn't alone. Mm. See you for dinner. Where are you going? To check the desk clerk again. See if that carton's arrived. We'll pick you up in a half an hour. Okay. Ringing, ringing, ringing. Will it never stop? Yes, sir. May I help you? Yeah, well, uh, I'm, I'm already registered here. We have no vacancies. But I just told you, I'm, I'm already registered here. Mr. Byrne Hollowell. I can take your name for a future room, uh, with a deposit, of course. Look, did a carton come for me or not? Oh, you're Mr. Hollowell. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Well, we get so many customers. <laughs> By the way, you have a beautiful head of hair. Oh? <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. Now, uh, what is it that you wanted? Uh, did a carton come for me? What room are you in? I think it's 11. You think? <laughs> Don't you know for sure? Hmm. Well, maybe it's ten. Look, 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 look. We just checked in yesterday. I, I signed one of those cards for the room. Burn Hollowell. Yesterday? Mm, yes, yesterday. Well, it's such a mishmash going through all these registrations. Mm, Mr. and Mrs. Bert Hollowell. Burn Hollowell. That's the one. Mm, well, they, they all say that. Say what? Mr. and Mrs. Are you really married? Oh, uh, yes, I am. I mean, to the lady you're with. Yes, I am. This is a motel. We get all kinds, you know. You're in room 14. 14? Huh. Oh, remember, 14. 
Uh, n did anything come for me? Well, I'll, I'll look and see. What wonderful hair you have. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would you like to try one of our slot machines while I uh, search the package? No, 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 no. Thanks. I'll, I'll, I'll wait right here. Um, here's a small carton addressed to Mr. Burn Hollowell. That's the one. That's the one. Uh, 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 uh. Don't get grabby. <laughs> Do you have any identification? Identification? For what? Before I can deliver this package, I must have some kind of identification. A driver's license, maybe. Oh, here's my driver's license. Some credit cards, a BPOE card. Splendid. Mm-hmm. Your hair, uh, it photographs just fine on your driver's license, doesn't it? <laughs> can I have the package now? Oh, uh, here. Oh, I never went through such an ordeal just to get a package before. Uh, thanks a lot. Well, we must take precautions, Mr. Hare. Uh, Hollowell. Ada, it came. We've been looking all over for you. I, I was at the casino across the way, and, and we're in 14. What? This is room 14. Says 11 on the door. Well... The desk clerk said it was 14. Well, then the desk clerk must have made a mistake. It has numbers right on the door that says it's 11. Hmm. Just like Mr. Gross said, plain tubes, unmarked. Oh, Byrne, don't put it on now. We have to have lunch with Ash and Nellie. He said night was the best time anyway, didn't he? Uh, you got a pin? A pin? What for? The tube is sealed. I need something to puncture a hole in the cap with. Burn, Millie, and Ash are waiting for us. At least Mr. Gross didn't forget to send it. <laughs> now I can have hair as thick and shiny as his. Just wait till you see me tomorrow morning. Andy Griffith again, and here is the concluding act of Bob. Oh, that was a nice dinner. A little hurried, but nice. Yeah, I was anxious to get back and try the new hair salve. Now, uh, well, where's your pin? I don't have one. A nail file? Only this. Ada, this is an emery board. It's all I use. We'll have to open the top of this gizmo to get the salve out of the tube. Well, maybe Mildred has one. You want me to ask her? No, I'll get it. What's their room number? Well, the desk clerk said this was 14, but it's marked 11. So theirs must be... Gosh, there are only two doors down and across the hall. Oh, I'll get a pin from Mildred or Ash. Come in. It's unlocked. Hi, Ash. Hello, Byrne. Uh, I, I came in to get something for my wife. What are you asking for? <laughs> hi, Byrne. Uh, hi, Millie. Uh, do you have a pin? A pin? Uh, got a safety pin. Well, that ought to do. What do you want it for? Uh, that hair salve uh, Mr. Gross sent me. A hair shine? Each tube is closed at the top. I, I mean, after you unscrew it. I think there's one on my robe. If I can find my robe. Let's see. Maybe it's under there. Get out of bed, Ash. Get out of the room, Byrne. Why? So Mildred can look under the bed. Let's see. Oh, yeah, here it is. And here's the safety pin. Oh, thanks, Mildred. Uh, return it when you're finished. Oh, I will. Uh, thanks a lot. Him and his hair gunk. Well, you have to admit it. Byrne does have a wonderful head of hair. Come here. Let me run my fingers through yours. Oh, my. Aren't you affectionate tonight? No, it isn't that. I washed my hands and I can't find a towel. Oh, very funny. <laughs> if you were a chaperone for Adam and Eve, there'd be no world. The safety pin works, Ada. The salve is oozing out. Mm, it smells kind of funny. Oh, nuts to how it smells. If it gives me hair like Mr. Gross's, it'll be okay. Oh, I use the whole tube. Oh, hair shine, do your miracle. Well, the least you could do is go in the bathroom to put it on. Okay, Tom. I'll rub it in good. Oh, I wish there was a mirror in here. Yeah, there's a mirror in here. I mean in what we huh, laughingly call our room. It's very hard trying to take off makeup by looking in a doorknob. How you doing? Oh, it smarts a little. Guess it's supposed to, huh? I wouldn't know. It's the stuff working, I guess. How do I look? Any different? Well, you look like a wild man from Borneo uh, right now. Well, 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 I'll, I'll comb it. Uh-oh. What's the matter? A few hairs came out. And some more. 
Maybe that's the way it's supposed to work. Well, maybe. It's, it's making my head all tingly. Did you use up the whole tube? Everything I could squeeze out. Oh, uh, I, I, I promised to return the safety pin to Mildred. Oh, I'll, I'll do it. Phew. Smell like the inside of a motorman's glove. Oh. I think I'm going to sleep on the patio tonight. No, no, I won't have it. I'm not going to sleep in the same bed with you and that smell. Then I will sleep on the patio. Man tries to do something about his hair and his wife cuts him down. Damn. A husband does not swear before his wife. Oh, I beg your pardon. I didn't know you wanted to swear first. Very funny. I'm going in the patio. Well. Huh? Wake up. What? Wake up. Well, what's the matter? Wake up. Oh, well, where am I? You can't sleep here. Huh? I said you can't sleep here. Now get out. Imagine a freeload. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, look, I'm a guest at this moment. I don't oh. care who you are or what you are. The guests with rooms overlooking the patio and pool are complaining. Well, well, who's complaining? The guests. The guests. Why? Why was I, was I snoring or something? Why? They don't want any bums using this patio. Hey, now, okay, sleep it off. Now, just a minute. What's all that hair doing in your chair? Hair? Oh, no. No, no. Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, now, get out. Oh, my hair. It's gone. The management oh. is not responsible oh. for the loss of toupees or anything else. Oh, my hair. It all fell out. Look. Will you leave or must I call the police? Oh, you don't understand. I lost my hair. I understand enough. Now, out. No, now. But I'm Bern Hollowell, the one with the hair you admired. <laughs> You look more like Telly Savalas. I'm registered here. You looked it up yourself. I'm room 14. Only on the door it says 11. We do not make mistakes. Well, my wife looked and she said it was 11. Your wife? Ha, ha, ha. Holy mackerel, I'm bald. Are you getting out or do I call the police to throw you out? My hair. <laughs> my wonderful hair. Look at me. Just look at me, Ash. My hair is falling out. What can I do to keep it in? <laughs> well, you can try a paper bag. Oh, <laughs> it's not a joke. That hair salve did it to me. Well, I told you it smelled kind of funny. Well, if you ask me, Bern looks a little like you, Brenner, doesn't he? Desk clerk thought I looked like Telly Savalas. Him too. Nah, he doesn't have the wake for it. Ash, I'm bald. I'm bald. What'll I do? Well, to start with, uh, I'll stay out of drafts. Now, look, <laughs> we're going home today anyway. And the factory that made that stuff is right on our way. Ada's got a good idea, Bernie. Yeah. yeah, go right to the factory that made it. Give them what for. My beautiful head of hair gone. <laughs> My beautiful head of hair, God. Ah, oh, look at it this way. Think of all the money you'll save by not having to go to the barber shop. That's not funny, Ash. Well, it's practical. Burn, honey. What, Ada? I love to run my fingers through your hair. But I'm bald. Well, I can make better time on an open road. <laughs> get to that back. Oh, stop it and get to the factory, will you, Ash? <laughs> in there. What'd the factory say? They said that comic, Mr. Gross, must have made a mistake. You can say that again. They said that uh, he must have sent the wrong carton by mistake. What was it, Byrne? It's a, it's, a, it's a new product their subsidiary makes. They sent it to Mr. Gross. Byrne, what did they send? Well, I'm trying to tell you, Ada. It's a depilatory. Uh, a what? A depilatory, Mildred. A depilatory is to remove unwanted hair. Well, it wasn't hair shine. No. Well, like Mr. Gross said, he sure never opened that carton. Yeah, but the girl in there said I looked real cute bald. Oh, so that's why you're not upset. And Ash has something. <laughs> I can save money by not having my hair styled every week or so. Sure, an electric razor over your skull will do the trick. And the girl in there also said that I've got a nicely shaped head. <sighs> you know, Ben, you are going to drive me to my grave. I'll put the car in front of the house as soon as we get home. <laughs> Ada, Ada. Here, I was in the kitchen. What's the matter? Uh, the Lions Club still want me as the MC. Well, why shouldn't they? <laughs> well, they were thinking of trying someone else. Why? Just because you're bald? Mm, because I had too much hair. <laughs> it made them well uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? Why? Most of the members are a little bald. Oh. Uh, now they want me. Now that I have no hair at all. It'll grow back. Well, I know. But I don't want it to. I kind of like being bald. Huh. 
So you can sit in front of the girly show? No, because it saves a lot of time in the morning. <sighs> Where can I get some all-day suckers? Any candy store. Why? <laughs> if I'm going to look like Telly Savalas, I want to go first class. Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Baldy was written by Ted Sherdeman, produced and directed by Fletcher Marco. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our stars were Shepard Minkin, Lillian Bayef, Vic Perrin, and Mary Jane Croft. Featured in the cast were Dawes Butler, Jack Carroll, and Jack Crucian. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CDI. Tomorrow's Sears Radio Theater will be a mystery with Vincent Price as your host. Let's listen. In order for me to help you in any way... You must believe. In you? No, not in me. In the power that operates through me. Oh, make me believe, Miss Rabbit. Make me believe. Make my son live. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to Sears Radio Theater. KMOX FM, St. Louis. KMOX FM. Yes, news. President Carter has returned to Washington following a one-day trip to Kentucky and Indiana. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS Radio Network. Mr. Carter visited a coal-fired electric power plant in Louisville, Kentucky, and spoke to a town meeting in Bardstown. The president then made an unscheduled hop across the Ohio River to Indiana. Lee Thornton has a report. After a day in Kentucky where he talked a lot about energy, President Carter traveled by helicopter from Bardstown toward Louisville. But the president detoured to take a look at storm and flood-damaged southern Indiana. Mr. Carter had earlier declared the state a major disaster area. The president decided to get a closer look at the town of English, where the Little Blue Creek overflowed its banks last week. About 50 of the town's 600 people saw the presidential helicopter and came running. Standing almost ankle-deep in mud, Mr. Carter brought assurances of help. The trip lets you know that we're thinking about you, and we'll have some help in here very shortly. Thank you. The visit lasted just 15 minutes, but for at least one person, the impact was significant. She told the president, you restored our faith in government. Lee Thornton, CBS News, Washington. A spokesman for the Houston Fire Department says arson is being investigated as a possible cause of today's seven-alarm blaze which roared through an 1,100-unit apartment complex. At least one man was critically burned and several hundred luxury apartments were reduced to rubble. The fire spread quickly while most of the residents of the Woodway Square apartments were at work. Damage was estimated at $15 million. The Chrysler Corporation said today it could use government help. The company reported the worst quarterly loss in its history, $207 million in red ink, during the second three months of the year. In Detroit, Chrysler Chairman John Ricardo outlined some ideas for Washington to assist the company. We would propose a tax bill that would allow Chrysler to get an accelerated tax credit for the years 1979 and 1980, amounting to one-half of the expenditures for ER&D tooling facilities for our product programs. And so in as much as those expenditures in the two years amount to approximately a billion, something in excess of a billion in each of the two years, that we would be allowed to claim a credit of approximately a half a billion dollars in 79 and about the same amount in 1980. The Treasury Department said today it will make a study of Chrysler with an eye toward possible federal assistance. The House tonight reversed the action it took last week and gave President Carter power to impose gasoline rationing. That power would be subject to only one congressional veto. Last week, the House adopted a Republican-sponsored amendment which would require a cumbersome two-stage approval by Congress before rationing could be imposed. Former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger today advised the Senate not to ratify the new SALT agreement with the Soviet Union unless some changes are made. Kissinger said SALT II should be rejected unless there's a boost in U.S. defense spending, some amendments to the treaty, and a tough new policy against Soviet conduct. Theodore Bundy says he will appeal and still maintains he's innocent as a judge in Miami today sentenced the 32-year-old former law student to death in the electric chair. Bundy convicted of murdering two co-eds.
The Department of Energy says starting tomorrow, it will allow service stations to charge motorists extra for cleaning their windshields, putting air in their tires, and honoring credit cards. The government decision aimed at appeasing service station owners who have expressed concern about their profit margins. But a spokesman for the National Congress of Petroleum Retailers said all the new rules will do is let service stations antagonize their customers. Doug Poling, CBS News.